This is Connect and Convert, Insider Strategies for Small Business Sales Success. We have a topic today that I think all of us will find interesting. Hope so. It's called scarcity. Scarcity. Yeah, what's scarcity? But before we dive into that, I have a wonderful announcement. Joining me today in this podcast, and hopefully on subsequent podcasts, if she likes it and can stand me, is Leah Bumphrey, an esteemed colleague, a fellow Wizard of Ads partner, a brilliant sales mind, an inspiring writer, now my partner on this podcast. I think Leah is going to provide a little different perspective. We share a lot of the same thoughts on sales, but her perspective is interesting and different. Leah, please introduce yourself to our audience. Hey, I, I am just pleased to. Dennis, I love working with you. And yes, we come at, at times at, on different topics from a different angle, but we both love radio. We both love having clients where we can make a difference and training is something that's important to us because we see that as being a huge, sure. a huge need and something that we can do. Uh, I'm joining you guys from here in Canada and uh, we're not that different. So this is going to be fun. You're just a little colder and snowier than we are here in Florida. That's all. That's, that's not a problem, is it? We can deal with that. Yeah, we'll, we'll be okay. Okay, let's jump in. F-O-M-O, FOMO. You've heard of FOMO. FOMO, the fear of missing out. That is one of the most powerful driving forces that we know of in sales and marketing, the fear of missing out. So today, Leah and I are going to do a deep dive into one of Cialdini's, Robert Cialdini, Dr. Robert Cialdini, the godfather of influence, into one of his key principles, and that is the principle of scarcity. I will preface this by saying what you think about scarcity and what you possibly know about scarcity may not be 100% on target. I've got some new little things that I'm share with you about scarcity. I'm, I'm a founding member of the Cialdini Institute that was just recently formed. I am a certified Cialdini influence coach and practitioner. So I've done a very deep dive into influence. I'm now able to all of Dr. Cialdini's information and research, and I'm going to share a lot of that with you today. These principles are ethical, and they are right there in the moment. They're right there in the moment. They don't need to be manufactured, but they're often overlooked. Hopefully after today, that won't be the case. When you say overlooked, Dennis, that makes me think of Wizard Academy. Often I, overlooked as a, as a place to go for business, vacuum or for trainees. Uh, they are a sponsor of our podcast, but there's a reason for that. You both have been exposed to Roy's principles that really sense when it comes to building business and the why of it. We don't want to overlook that. I can't help but remember the first time I went to the academy. I, the word I keep using, you know, it's transformational. I know that word sometimes over here, but it transformed the way I thought about business. I went with uh, to a course taught by Michelle Miller, Marketing to Women. My radio stations were uh, very female-centric, and I need to learn more about marketing to women. And boy, did she change my brain. I've been going back every year for over 20 years. I never miss uh, taking at least one course at the Wizard Academy. Uh, I can only ask our listeners to go to wizardacademy.org. Yeah, wizardacademy.org. And look at the menu. Look at the offerings. There's just mm -hmm. so much there that it doesn't matter what industry you're it doesn't matter if you're coming at it from the prospect or from the perspective of being a business owner or someone trying to help business owners. There's something there that you need. I mean, there's even courses, and I took my uh, one of my sons to the Young Writers class, and that is held in the summer, and that's going on probably ten years ago now. And he has continued to to go to the Wizard Academy because there's just so much there. As he calls it, it's real learning. It's a little bit different than that university stuff. But it's real learning, but it's done from a perspective that gets inside your brain and makes you think thoughts you've never thought before. Think that you need to think, but you never thought before. So give it a shot. Wizardacademy.org. Okay, let's jump into today's podcast 
today's episode on scarcity. Let me introduce the topic by telling you a bit of a story, Lee, and see if you can relate to the story. Let's say we could wind the clock back in the Dennis uh, Wayback Machine or the Leah Wayback Machine and tell someone that in the, in the 70s and 80s, we could wind back to the 70s and 80s and tell someone that in 40 years, people were sleeping all night camping out in front of a store to buy a cell phone. What would you think of that, Leah? I would have laughed. I would not have thought that was possible. I'm thinking back in the late 80s, I had one of those nice bag cell phones. I was pretty trendy. Just oh just clear. Yes. It had the booster and, you know, with a bit of a brick. And I yes. can't believe I ever recycled that. I wish I still had it to show my kids because they don't believe me. They don't believe it. I know I had many of those bricks, but iPhone, of course, transformed everything for the, the mobile phone business. So here's an amazing story. This is real. Two women were in the iPhone line. I don't remember which model that was new, but it was just announced, and it was announced as available. One of them was in position number 23. The other one was in position 21, so fairly close. They started a conversation. 21 gave 23 a compliment on her handbag. You have a beautiful bag. It was an original Louis Vuitton worth thousands of dollars, probably like the one you carry, Leo, but we don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, it all anyway. depends on the color. All depends on the yeah, color. I understand. Well, anyway, number 23 replied, hey, you can have my bag if I can have your position in line. What? She was move up two positions from 23 to 21 and give her a multi-thousand dollar bag. She was asked later, what the heck were you thinking? Um, and she said, hey, well, I heard the store only had a limited number of new iPhones, and I did not want this, my chance to get that iPhone on the very first day. That's wow. what you call first world scarcity. My goodness. Yes. First That's world true. problems. Huh? <laughs> yeah. And, I, and, I'm, uh, and I'm assuming that they both ended up getting, getting their, uh, their phone story that I have didn't go that far, but I would assume they did. But I know 21, the woman who was 23 and swapped to 21, she got one for sure. Okay. I think 23 got one too. So powerful. How do we use this in sales? Leah, have you ever had any experience with using the principle of scarcity? The fact that there are only a few of these available? Absolutely. And you always have to be cautious when you're doing it because if, if there isn't scarcity, then you look like a salesperson who just cares about the sale. But if you have an actual situation where there is a limited number of products or a, a concern about that limiting uh, limiting inventory, then it's real and you can make a difference. I think you and I both come from a radio background. And when I started in radio, and that's almost three decades ago, the idea that there was a limited inventory, we couldn't just add paper. Remember back to the newspapers, if you did a lot of ads, you could add more, you could find fill, filler content. You can't do that in radio. You can't take away the announcers. You can't take away the, the music or the talk. So there's so many ads. Once those ads are gone, you're finished. Well, so you're you right. Scarcity is a big deal in the radio business. And uh, we talk, we've talked about this in other episodes. But uh, you mentioned something about those who say it is scarce when it isn't. One of the things that Dr. Cialdini, when he brought us into the Cialdini Institute, said and repeats and repeats and repeats, you must use influence ethically. There are unethical ways to use it and ethical ways. He said, everything that I will teach you can be used either for the good or for the bad. He said, your obligation as a professional, as a certified Cialdini professional, is to use it for the good. And I take that quite seriously. So there are, there's humor, everything from, from combo to uh, just conversations and stories that we share with friends where a salesperson has tried to stop us on price, has tried to say, you know what, I only have so many of these available. I've got a little old lady that's been looking at this house for a while. We know, we, we, we are much more educated buyers than ever before. And all of us, from whatever perspective, we realize that that's total BS. Even the people saying it know that. Of course, and unethical use. And today we want to talk about the ethical use of scarcity. 
are there ways that you can use scarcity uh, that are ethical and effective? And I'll start with what makes you, you know, have you ever done an inventory of your company or of yourself? What rare talents, what skills, what abilities? Do you or your company possess? Let's give an example of athletes. This is one of the favorite topics of my wife. She doesn't understand how professional athletes can make all that money. Okay? She said it's not right. It's not fair. That should be for the teachers and the policemen. And and she's not totally wrong. But why? Okay, Leah, why do athletes, professional athletes, make so much money? It's a business. It's an absolute business. They're making money because the business then is able to make money because there's not that that many athletes at that level. There it is. Uh, it's a it, Number one, it's a business. And it's a capitalist business, <laughs> what the market will bear. But what they do is scarce. I'm a big fan of NFL football. I know you guys in Canada, you don't care about that stuff. Well, are you kidding? That is that is a hot ticket. If you come to my house on a Sunday, my it's husband. It's NFL football, huh? All, all over, all the time. There's no I'm, game a, I'm a Miami Dolphins fan, true and true. Spent all of the last several, many decades in Florida and in Miami. And Tyreek Hill, Tyreek Hill is my example. This dude is one of the greatest athletes I think that I've ever observed. He runs track meets. He runs circles around. He's the fastest player in the NFL. Okay. And he's thankfully a Miami Dolphin. And he and, and Tua and Tagobalaya, they have teamed up to make a one two combination. And they both are paid multi millions of dollars because what they do, almost nobody else can do. And it's a business. So they are unique and their talents are scarce. So I, I invite you, inventory your personal story. I'll bet when you go back and look at yourself, you have some experiences or your company has had some experiences that are unique. that are something that no one else has. Find out what's your creative superpower, okay? Quality creative output is scarce. For instance, in our business, Leah, uh, writing, uh, creating great commercial spots. Uh, talk a little bit about that. How scarce is that? Someone who can actually write and produce a really good radio spot. You know, that's the backbone of any of any campaign is to be able to tell the message of the business in a way that is not just advertising the industry. We live in a world where conformity at some point be- became so overwhelmingly important to, to people, especially to kids, and we can see this happening. Everyone thinks that they're being unique by being different, by being the same. That's not what we're talking about. Oh. So if we're talking about, let's take a, a, a commodity like insurance. So insurance is insurance is insurance. But if you're selling insurance, Dennis, it's going to be a lot different than how I would sell insurance. And those differences are important because for everybody selling it, for everyone providing that service, there is also different types of people that require it and they're going to feel comfortable with it. So when you hear these ads and it's about, you know, we've been in, in, in uh, business for 25 years, we have free parking and we're conveniently located. It's a whole bunch of businesses that can say that. Yeah, that's not really, that's not scarce, is it? And that's what that's what you hear on most radio ads these days, most TV ads. We're the biggest, we're the largest, we're the best, we, we have more selection. Who can't say that? What is it that you say about your business that no one else can say? What's that superpower? That's the thing we need to look for to exercise the principle of scarcity, something that no one else has. So also it can be a unique perspective. Maybe you or your business, you have a, a, a perch that's different than other people in your industry. Uh, you know, two people can view the same event and describe it totally differently. How is your perspective unique? And here's another one. What relationships do you have? Who do you know? We, we've talked about this before. Do you have relationships with people that are scarce, that are valuable and scarce? Hey, those kind of scarce relationship and contacts, those are leverage. 
those can put you in a different ball game. And yet they're always there in the situation. We rarely think of them. As a business owner, it is critically important that you honor and that you are excited about the things that make you different. Otherwise, why are you in business? Think about a franchise. Even why would you go to that McDonald's versus the other McDonald's? Yeah, location, that's about it, right? Step, but they're right? different than any other, um, than, than a Taco Bell or a Taco Time. So that becomes their unique selling proposition. But when you're talking about the, the, the lifeblood of business and family businesses, that little bit of difference that we bring to it individually is, is everything. That could be your scarcity. Claim it. If it just sits there under the bushel, as they say, and you never open it, it doesn't help you. You've got to claim it. So let, let's jump to another topic real quick about scarcity. I get this a lot. People ask me this question. What motivates more, the, the joy of the gain or the pain of the loss? Okay. Well, science-based again. All of Chaldini work is science-based, and therefore all of what I tell you is science-based. Loss aversion. Studies are very clear. The pain of losing something is twice as powerful as the joy of gaining something of equal value. Equal value. Let me give you an example. Great story. They were doing a home energy bill study in California. They were going door to door to assess energy use. They had three messages. Message one, by installing more insulation and solar panels on your house, you can reduce your energy bill. Message two, if you take this proposal, you will save XXX amount of dollars in energy per month. Message three, if you don't take advantage of this offer, you will continue to lose, to lose XXX per month. Leah, what do you think was the most effective message in getting someone to comply with the request? Oh, definitely the loss frame. Take the this or it's gone. That right. makes all the difference in the world. Science is very clear. Loss framing in that particular research had 150, 150 increase in yeses. It's the wow. same money. It's different frame. The, the, the money was the same, okay? But it's a different frame. Losses get our attention. They're visible. The downside of something, something not happening, is more salient to our brain than the benefits of a potential gain. In sales, and maybe you found yourself doing this, I, I know I have, I'm always you know, being the optimist. I want to tell you about what you can gain, what you can win. But wouldn't it be better, maybe more successful in sales if we emphasize what the client stands to lose if they don't act? How do you how do you see that, Leah? Have you had experience with that? Well, you know what? It's interesting because it's like having a premium attached to a purchase. So let's take it out of the business venue and you're going to buy something. And if you buy this bottle of whiskey, here's your price. But if they have a limited amount of the whiskeys with glasses associated with them. Same price. Well, you got to buy it now because you know it's going to be you're going to be gone. Where, where are you? You don't want to lose out that opportunity. I don't need any glasses, but <laughs> like, trust me. And I don't think many of us do, but if you have that opportunity to get a little something extra, you're going to go in that direction. It also makes me think of kids. When you have little kids that are eating supper, and they don't want to eat it. And then you can get dessert. Now I'm not advocating that, but doesn't it work? <laughs> Those that broccoli's going down if you know the cookie doesn't come after because there's that fear of loss. You really want the cookie? I'll choke back the broccoli. The FOMO, the fear of missing out, right? <laughs> yep, absolutely. Good, good examples. Let's let's jump to our final uh, notion today about scarcity. Um, what things do you control that have limited access and or limited availability? I'll bet more than you think. So let me start with the first example. I always get asked this question too. Should I emphasize limited time or limited quantity? Which one of those is more persuasive? Which one executes scarcity or are they the same? You have five minutes to take advantage of this fabulous offer or there are only five items left. Act fast. What do you think, Leah? Absolutely. What would you the tangible is the item. 
we're all used to being time starved. So if somebody tells me, hurry, 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 I'm just as likely to go, hey, I don't need it that much. I, I, I don't want I don't want that pressure. I don't want to be elbowing some woman with a loose baton bag out of the way. But if you tell me there's only so many available, huh, what if I need this? What if one of my kids needs it? What if my husband needs it? My goodness, I better grab one of these because there's an opportunity with having something with a lot of them. Well, guess what? You are on the side of science. There is no question they both can be persuasive when used properly, but limited quantity, limited quantity always tests better than limited time. So if you're in a, if you're in a conundrum about what to use and add or how to use in sales, uh, limited quantity beats limited time. How about information? You know, this is a part that most people never even think of. Information that you control, that you create, uh, that you curate, information can be scarce. What information do you possess or does your company possess that's unique, proprietary, not readily or easily available? Maybe you have a proprietary database, a certain technique that you have perfected and own, a system uh, that only you offer. What is that thing? What is that thing? What is that scarcity of information that you possess? Another twist on this, I have some some uh, people that I, I talked to about this, and they will refuse to offer a sales proposal, a proposal for business, if they don't have enough information. They make their proposal scarce. They will not submit a price, a program, a presentation until they have appropriate information. Another use of scarcity. Okay. That makes a lot of sense because I mean, we're talking about ethical use of, of scarcity. Yes. And the ethical thing I can think of is the uh, ability and the desire and offer to share. Right? If I need some help with something, again, Dennis, I could give you a shout. And if it's an area that you know, I know you're going to share that information with me. I don't have it. I'm willing to ask. But think as a business, if you are willing to offer that you're willing to offer the fact that you have this, this, and this that yes. is not available. I mean, that's the cabbage information is the cabbage patch kit of the 80s. Yep. You remember when you could find any of those? That was a big oh deal. Up here in bring back memories of horror. I see a little nervous twitch happening there. I, but I couldn't get those for my kids, and I was a bad daddy, you know. <laughs> Scarcity, but it, it it's real. And yep. what you just said is real. So Let's close out. I want to give, let's give our listeners a bonus today. You think we should give them a bonus? Let's give them a bonus. One more, one last thought on scarcity. How to increase your chances of winning negotiation. Now, we all get into big negotiations, little negotiations. I'm talking about any negotiation, okay? So you're in a negotiation. You get hung up on some fairly minor detail, okay? That happens all the time. The big things are falling in line, but there's just, a few little things that just you can't reach agreement. I'm going to suggest to you, you try turning it around. Most of us would say, well, until you do X, Y, Z, we don't have a deal. What does Dr. Cialdini teach us? Based on research, science, we have a deal. You just need to do X, Y, Z. Now, You've set up a lose situation, haven't you? You've set up a loss situation. We have a deal. You just need to do this. You don't. You don't recommend giving them a signing pen. <laughs> of course, that's. But Leah, I don't mean to be rude, but that's old school. <laughs> I, there are. There, in my opinion, we'll do a podcast on that. Okay, Absolutely. I love that. Here's the pen. Just sign here. Oh my gosh. Keep the pen. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> Dr. Cialdini personally stands behind the advice I just gave you. This comes direct from the doctor, okay? We have a deal. You just need to do this. He has clients of his that have 100% success with that technique. And nothing works 100% of the time. But in this case, it does. Try it. You'll like That's it. Fantastic. So that's a pretty deep dive into scarcity. Scarcity is your friend. If used ethically, 
it gives you leverage. It's in situations. Go through the checklist that we recommended today. You're going to find scarcity in your life. And okay, that does it for Connect and Convert, our deep dive into scarcity. We share insider strategies for small business sales success. Leah and I will be back soon. Tune back in soon. We'll be back.